Hello everyone, welcome to the third video to beginner's guide on how to revit. In this video, I'll explain how to properly set up your levels. Let me explain what levels are first. Much like grids, they also establish a framework for our model. All elements inside our model are assigned and constrained to levels in order to establish their position in 3D space. And importantly, levels are also used to create our plan views in the model which help facilitate modeling and navigating. The level's type parameters are very similar to grids as well. Now, plenty of ways to place level. Here's one of them. We go to elevation. Here's our level. As you see, it seems very far from the grid. What can we do is we're going to zoom into that level, highlight them, We can drag the extent here by clicking this circle. We do the same for the other side. Next step is we just copy paste the levels going up. But first, let's drag the grid so that we have space for them. I said earlier in our previous video that we need two bubble heads for each grid. We don't need to do the same for elevation or section view, but you can do so if it's required for you. But for now, let's avoid that. Copy paste this level going up. If you look on the left side, we're actually missing the properties palette. We must have closed them by mistake. When that happens to you, you can actually just go to View, User Interface, and here it is, Properties. We'll just click this box. Here we go. Now, let's put it back. There. Okay. Continuing. Now, if you notice here, level 1 and level 2 have a blue color on them. That's because they're listed here in our project browser. Since four, level 4 and level 3 were just newly copied, they're not yet here listed. If you want to list them, we can go to View, Plan Views, Floor Plan, and here we can act so this gives us a choice to list what if newly copied but for now let's not do this one and just focus on our task at hand next let's rename them we can name this as ground floor okay what this sign means is that if i change this one this the level 0 to a, to a different name, it will affect the name here as well. But don't worry, that's perfectly safe. So just click this one and say yes. The same thing should happen to level 2. Let's name this first floor here. And since level 3 and level 4 are not yet listed on our project browser, there will be no sign of a warning second floor third floor next thing I'll teach you is an annotate command called the align what this does is it allows us to place dimension line between parallel references or straight lines that allows us to know the distance between one of them. Let's use this for our level. As you see here, the, lev the first level is actually rested on zero, while the other one is 4,000. So, this should give us 4,000. The same can be done for second floor to first floor, second floor to third floor, and you can do the sum for all of it, like 
this. Another easy way to make a continuous dimensionalize by clicking the first one and going to edit witness line. Now, this is just one element. If we delete one of it, all, all will be deleted. Unlike the one we made earlier, which is this and this. Now, let's say that you want your levels to be equal to one another. You can click this one right here and press this EQ button. Now, let's do a dimension line for each of them. As you see, now they are equal to one another. There is actually an advanced way on how to properly set up levels. We're going to need two levels per floor. Now, you can click this icon here, which means an elbow, so that they, we can see one of them, since they're overlapping each other. The reason why we're making two levels per floor is because one level should be our structural level. We will name it ground floor SSL. While the second one is the finished floor level. It will be named as ground floor FL. Now, usually our tiling is, let's say, 100 millimeters apart from each other. And that's what we'll do. If you click this one here, this gives you a sign that you can edit it. I'm going to put 100. There we go. Now, the distance from the structural slab to the finished floor level is 100, and we will do the same for everything above it. First floor SL, the first floor FL, second floor SL, second floor FL, and lastly, third floor SL, third floor FL. Now, we don't actually need to do this now, I'm just showing it to you for future reference. But don't worry, I'll explain what this means in some future video. For now, let's go back in and do to the part until the second layer of level is deleted. One easy way to undo is, do you see this drop down button here? If you click this one, it will give us a list of everything we've done, or rather, undo history. So, let's try to do the elbow. Let's keep going. Here, I believe this is the last place we've been. Now we're almost done. Before we end this video, I almost forgot to explain to you what the project browser is. Here is the project browser. Simply put, a project browser shows a logical hierarchy for all our views, schedules, sheets, and groups. This is our view. Here's our schedule. Here's our sheets, families, and groups. I'll explain in future videos what legends, schedules, sheets, families, groups, and Revit links are. Now, for our next video, we will be linking CAD drawings into our Revit. In the description below will be a link for some CAD drawings we'll be using for our next consecutive videos. Also, you can use this as your guide when you want to practice on your own. So that's it for our next video. Sorry. So that's it for our third video. 
For questions and suggestions, please do comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. It will help me in the long run. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.